Oh. It's the face he always does before he intros, where he looks like he's contemplating <laughs> his whole life. And at that moment, I am. <laughs> I'm fully prepared to drop dead at any point in this podcast. What's up, spider lovers and vampire lovers, and welcome to another episode of That 90 Spider-Man Show, where we talk about Spider-Man in the animated series. Sometimes. Not this time. This time we're talking about um, our favourite vampire hunter, Blade, but rather than the animated series or the movies, we're talking a bit about what's ahead for our favourite vampire hunter. Um, we have a new casting for Hersha Ali coming up, and we have no idea what's going on in this movie, but we want to find out. And to do that... We've drafted some help. So alongside me and Jack, as always. Yeah, uh, we got Diego Crespo from the Waffle Press podcast. If you guys haven't listened, go check those guys out. How are you doing, Diego? Oh, I'm doing just peachy. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is, is great and there are no problems in the world. But uh, no, no, thank you for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, what do you think of the original Blade trilogy, which is a weird oh, thing God. to say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> the original trilogy of Blade. Yeah, but what do you think of the uh, Wesley Snipes Blades? The first and second Blade might be the most underappreciated superhero movies, like, of that era. Uh-huh. Uh, because especially the first Blade is, like, I think a genuinely great film. And the second one's, like, a great action film. The, the plot is kind of, like, really bare bones, but, like, it works for Blade 2, right? Um... Uh, but the first one, like, I think really holds up, like, just, like, as a story with the filmmaking and, like, as a film, like, how it progresses and, like, escalates uh, really well while also being kind of really badass. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one is just straight up, like, badass and awesome and fun. Uh, and then the third one just doesn't work, like, at all. In any capacity. But, like, whatever. That happens sometimes. You know, two out of three is not bad. Yeah. Better track record than most things. So, uh, I, I like most of the ones we got. Yeah. That was kind of our feeling before uh, we started doing our retrospective series and we had to watch Blade the series. F- for those who haven't seen, check out our Patreon for our episodes on Blade 2, Blade, Blade Trinity. Z, Blade the series. And that Blade the anime as well. Blade the fucking anime. <laughs> which is actually not bad. Uh, and in that one, we actually ranked all the blades and their fuckability. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what, what, speaking of uh, Blade himself, what do you think of Wesley Snipes as Blade? But not concerning fuckability, just in general. I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's one of the the great action stars alongside, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone to me, like, of that era, especially, like... That that dude just had charisma, like, falling out all over the place, you know? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, he did a little jail time, which kind of maybe kind of dampered that for everyone for a while. Yeah. And uh, Who but, knew taxes but, were real? Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was real taxing but, uh, time. Really <laughs> yeah, so we, we got, like, a new casting for the MCU. We got Mahashala Ali coming in as Blade. And that's pretty much, as far as I know, that's pretty much all we know about this new Blade movie. Is it's that it's that... going to be a movie and Mahershala Ali is going to be Blade. Yeah, what, what do you think of that casting? Uh, that's terrific casting. I think it was like, didn't he like show up to Marvel after winning an Oscar and he was just basically like, I want to be Blade. And they're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, cool. We want to do that eventually. Yeah. Why not get an Oscar winner to do it? I mean, he won for Green Book, but, you know, he, he's like a great actor outside of that. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into So, like, yeah, just honestly, just pretend it was for, like, Moonlight or, like, a million other things he's mm. amazing in. But, no, I think I think if you got to reboot Blade, I honestly am surprised it didn't go younger. Not that he, he he looks like as old as like someone like Robert Downey Jr. or anything, but like just because the Marvel stuff right now kind of feel like they're starting to pivot to the younger Spider Man yeah. age group of superheroes, mm. so that's just a little surprising to me. But mm. I'm not upset about him being Blade at all. I th- I think he'll be terrific, and I'd love to see if he's gonna like kind of guide the project, like uh, like Robert Downey Jr. kind of guided the Iron Man ones. Yeah. Just as much as the directors and, and Kevin Feige. So I, I'd 
I'd be interested to see what he wants to bring to that because, I mean, the fact that he just walked up to them and was like, I want to be Blade, <laughs> like, I, I think that means he's going to be a little more hands-on at least. Yeah, I it's hope so, happening. actually. Because yeah. I, I feel like they they do need a specific vision for Blade because I don't think it's all that clear what a Blade movie should be. I feel like what we think of as a Blade movie is just, like, very specific, like, directing and also Wesley Snipes just going off the rails. Right, yeah. A lot of the time. I think the good thing about Mahajala Ali is, as well as being, like, a genuinely great actor, you've got performances, like, when he was Cottonmouth in uh, Luke, Luke Cage. Cage yeah. He had this mm-hmm. kind of unstable energy to him. Yeah. And it was so charismatic that I feel like he could pull off some of the more insane aspects of the character. I think it'd be a more muted version of Blade. He won't be, like, calling people motherfuckers left, right, and centre. But yeah. I feel like... you. I think oh, it's a Disney Blade. movie as well. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> But I feel like, yeah, like you need like a level of instability, I guess, to make mm. a Blade movie work. Here's a question for both of you. Do you guys think it will be R-rated or do you think Marvel wouldn't go for that? If you're going to make a Marvel movie, if you're going to make a vampire movie that's not R-rated and doesn't have any of like, the swearing or violence that you really want from like a vampire movie, you effectively get Black Twilight and I don't think we want that. But at the same time, you can easily off a vampire without any bloodshed, you that's know? That's, like, half the fun. Yeah, but you can, like, like literally just ash them, you know? I suppose. Yeah. I yeah. I, I don't know. I think they're going to go with the Buffy vibe, which is also why it's kind of weird to me that they didn't go younger, you know? Like, yeah. I think for a while there was, like, a rumor that, like, oh, they might get Blade back. Oh, and then they're going to have him be, like, a mentor to his, like, niece or something like that. And it'll be like Marvel's Buffy, and like I don't, I don't hate that idea either. But I don't think that's what they're gonna do now. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think they'll ever do a rated R movie just because Marvel stuff. Uh, as sometimes they, they do get like really individual artists to come in and like kind of go crazy in their playground. Um, they do have a very like strict box of what they can do there. Yeah, and that is not rated R, so which is a bummer because Blade is. A fun R-rated character, you know? Yeah. And if there is a Marvel property to be rated R, it would probably be Blade, right? Or Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, But even Deadpool, I feel like, can get away with not being rated R. I kind of do, too. Like, especially after, like, his two movies, which I like fine, you know? They're not, like, hard R movies. I I think they think they are. But if you take out, like, the language, it's like, oh, this is not that bad visually yeah Um, i think so i guess like a lot of the violence is very cartoony yeah Mm -hmm. um also all my favorite parts of uh deadpool aren't related to the the violence with the gore or anything anyway that's true the other thing um i I was thinking is how magical do you think they'll get for this because in the original blade trilogy yeah i guess the david s goya trilogy the goy of us yeah oh that's weird (laughs) yeah it's all about getting this grounded way of looking at vampires where it's like a virus Mm -hmm. and it's there's talk of it being an evolution and stuff like that yeah and so far in marvel you've got the magic in four is described as sort of uh, science we don't understand and the uh magic you got in doctor strange was about being like the source code of the universe or whatever and i'm thinking is this the bit where they they jump into, okay, magic is a thing, there's curses, there's all this kind of stuff. Like, do you think they'll have the confidence to do that, or whether they'll just play it sci-fi again? It's a good question, but I kind of think, especially with something like Blade, where it's kind of worked and it's like a sci-fi kind of thing, they're going to stick to that. And there's no mm-hmm. reason to change it, because there's no real characters which suffer for not having it be sci-fi. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it'll be more sci-fi again, like... Just, like, the metallic look of a lot of, like, those uh, compound set pieces in Blade and Blade 2, you know? Like, that feels... It's going to sound weird because a lot of stuff looked like that during that time, but that feels very, like, distinctly Blade to me now when I think of the character. Um, I'd like to see that kind of come back because everything's already, like, kind of gray sometimes in in those movies, too, as much as I like them, you know? They always look like they're shot in airport hangars. (laughs) Uh, but, like, that kind of works for, like, a vampire hideout now. So I'm like, oh, okay, that could be really fun. There is some stuff, especially in Blade 2, when they get sort of into, like, the headquarters of the 
vampires and it's so high tech that I do kind of like. Um, on the other hand, I do kind of just want to see more magic in the MCU and in the Blade anime, which I feel like is almost a bit of a blueprint for what else you can do with Blade. Yeah. That's not related to the Goyaverse, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a way more variation in that. Like in the first episode, you get a werewolf mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. there's variations of vampires that are like, some of them are like harpies and... It takes from a lot of, like, vampire lore from, like, around the world, like, throughout history. And I think maybe there would be, like, something to get from a Blade movie where the universe felt a bit different, if you're trying to make it feel a bit fresh. Yeah, that's also a good point. But in general, I think, the more I think about it, the more Blade is actually in a kind of similar spot that Spider-Man was in before he was brought into the MCU. Because you got two well-liked movies, and then... The third one being, like, less liked Mm -hmm. by people and sort of ending that trilogy. Yeah. And then I guess in this analogy, the series is The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Yeah. (laughs) Andrew Carfield is Kirk Sticky Fingers Jones. Yeah. And so um, I think from here, they've got a feeling of they they need to redefine it. And I think with Spider-Man, they thought, okay, well, let's make this movie kind of about his place in this wider world. And I wonder if they're going to sort of try and go with that similar formula again. I suppose, yeah. And I think there's going to be like a clamor to almost like tie him into the wider MCU, Mm. whatever that means going forward. I think it worked for Homecoming really well. You guys like Homecoming? Yeah. I like like Homecoming, but I'm not like super enthusiastic about it. The stuff I don't like, but I do. It's a good movie. I think it's a lot better than Far From Home. Right. Uh, okay, yeah, we're on the same page. Then. Good, good, good. <laughs> uh, like, I, I think that's not a bad idea for like a template of Blade. But the last thing I want is like Blade and Ant Man, or so. Actually, you know what? That sounds kind of fun. But save that for like an Avengers yeah. meetup or something. You know, have Blade stand on his own first. And then the post credit scene could be like for people that don't know. Oh, here's uh, Nick Fury or something because Mahershala Ali and Samuel L. Jackson together on screen would be awesome. But, like, yeah, when you brought up the werewolf stuff and, like, the curses, I'm like, yeah, I want to see that. Yeah. Like, there's no reason to just have him be, like, versus vampires all the time. Like, that could be the the main narrative drive of the series, right? That's, like, the hook for audiences. Yeah. But then, you know, like, even Blade Trinity's alternate ending was them hunting down werewolves. Have oh, you guys really? seen that? Really? No, I yeah. haven't seen that. Yeah, oh, no, it looks like a sitcom. Like, they shot it in, like, five minutes. It looks really <laughs> bad. Uh, like, it's it, uh, it's awful. But, you know, werewolves are fucking cool, and there's yeah. not a lot of werewolf There like, needs to be more werewolf there. stuff. Yeah. I miss my yeah. werewolves, man. Yeah, but when's awesome had a good werewolf movie? I have no idea. I want to say Teen yeah. Wolf. Yeah, the last thing yeah, I can was... remember is the Benicio Del Toro one from, like, 15 years ago or something. Yeah, yeah. I remember being really excited for that, and I saw that, and I was like, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, there's not a lot of werewolf stuff out there, and uh, Teen Wolf was really popular, so like, I bet uh, the movie and and the show, right? The show was like a big hit for, what was it, on ABC Family or something? Something like that, yeah. Something like that, yeah. It lasted like eight years or something crazy, like a supernatural level run, And, and so like... The, the kids that watch that, the teenagers that watch that, are going to be older and then Blade's going to come out. Like, I think the new Blade movies could be, like, uh, a Captain Marvel-level hit, honestly. And I, I don't think a lot of people were are pondering that. Yeah. Because the movies weren't that popular. Yeah. Like, even at their peak, there was still a very specific kind of, like, action, kind of noir, almost, and, demographic. And yeah. also, people kind of, like, refer back to the Blade movies as being part of this new superhero boom but saying that i feel like when we rewatched blade movies recently we're like there was so much about this we'd forgotten and so much that isn't talked about that kind of thing like you said earlier that's just so overlooked still even though everyone sort of knows about them yeah um and so i i think in a weird way that kind of puts it in a good place because people are clamoring for it but they've also they're not sick of it in the same way they might have felt with other superheroes that have been rebooted I see what you mean. Yeah. And I think also as well, like, the vampire front, like, vampires need a bit of, like, a PR boost anyway. And I feel like you saw this as, like, this Blade movie is about vampires, and everyone's like, oh, shit, but you give, it some, give them something, like, actually good. 
Yeah. It's going to go really, like, it can catch fire quite well, I think. Mm. I'm, I'm sort of caught between two things of what I want the movie to be, which is I want them to, like, establish this wider sort of supernatural universe. But on the other hand, I want them to go hard into the origin stuff because they kind of gloss over it a little bit in the first Blade. Yeah. And as we saw in the Blade anime, they go into it a little bit more. And it's actually, I think it's quite interesting to show how this kid is brought into this horrific universe and is kind of traumatized and then how that leads to him being this stoic badass who doesn't work well with others. Mm. Part of me is like, is it worth doing the whole Batman Begins thing or is that a bad idea? I don't know. Like a Blade Origin story almost. Yeah. Rather than making it so plot centric. That might be a good idea. If if you talk about my perfect like Blade movie... I would probably, like, lean towards what they did in the anime, because I feel like story wise mm. is a lot more satisfactory than what happens with the Goyverse. I I think there's actually a really interesting idea in following something like... This is, this is going to be a leap, but, like, the structure of the Godfather trilogy, <laughs> say what you will about the, the third film, uh, is, like, kind of perfect. It's like, you get the story you need in the first film, and the second one, it's like, okay, we could see the origins of, of the the father and the family, right? So you could still learn more about the history. I don't know why more films don't do that. Yeah, you that's know, true. like Like have a standalone story in the beginning and then start – that gives us an insight into the characters. And then, okay, let's see how this all started and where they're going by yeah. flashing back between the past and the present. Yeah. So like, I'd like to see that. Do the, the origin in the second film. And start us off with a new adventure right from the beginning. I think, um, yeah, I actually prefer that. I think that's that's a good pitch. Yeah. Uh, I have another pitch, though, and it's a very me thing to pitch because I bring this up every single episode of our show. I want Man-Thing in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care where, but like... <laughs> I want, okay, Man-Thing, he could show up in Doctor Strange because uh, yeah. the whole thing, for those who don't know... Man Thing is like the protector of the nexus of all realities. Of course. Which is in the Florida Everglades. And, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I think like, on the one hand, I think that's that would be a cool thing to bring up in a Sam Raimi Doctor Strange multiverse movie. Yeah. But on the other hand, I kind of think it would be interesting to keep Blade in the uh, south of the US as well. Okay. Because in a lot of the comics, he's like in Louisiana and stuff like that. Whereas in the movies, I don't think I can't even remember if they said a specific uh, setting, but I think it's like it's like Detroit or it's I know New York like, or... I know the TV show is based in Detroit. Right. Yeah. Do you know what where the movies are based? No idea. Which is also really cool because like so many superheroes do have like a specific place that they like safeguard, right? And Blade does get the freedom to kind of go wherever. So one movie could take place in a city. Another one could be in, like, Transylvania. Like, why hasn't Blade gone to Transylvania? You know, like, it's perfect. It's right there. Uh, And then another one just, like, out in the Florida Everglades, you know? Just hop around wherever. I feel like they should really, like, if they're going to sort of try and build a world around him, either pick somewhere like some of those southern states and make that sort of Blade's area, or even just go anywhere because it could be, like, less like US centric could be like in the anime and he could go to Asia and he goes uh, to Wakanda if he wanted to <laughs> I d- that would not work for me I feel like you're right but I don't care and I want it to happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's that's me with man thing I'm yeah. like, I don't care if it makes <laughs> sense <laughs> but what what do we think that because I, I think the MCU does have its flaws and it does have take things in a direction that we're not necessarily happy with all the time. Mm -hmm. What do we think that they could do that we wouldn't want them to do? What what will it actually be? I feel like there's four words that I can describe it here. What? Executive producer David Goyer. I would bring him back. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) That would be a huge mistake. Like Diego said earlier, I think there is a chance that they just go, this is a team-up movie with Doctor Strange or something like that. Like, end up detracting from Blade himself because they're just, like, stuffing it full of other characters we know. I yeah. Th- but it depends how confident they are and how much Mahershala Ali is calling the shots, I guess. He'll have, like, the Robert Downey Jr. thing, but also there'll be, like, 
There'll be like a what do you call it? Who was um the guy who directed Doctor Strange before Sam Raimi? What was his name? Uh, uh, Scott Derrickson. Scott Derrickson. Where yeah. they'll be like, yeah, you have a good idea, and they'd be like, fire him as soon as things get out of hand. Mm. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of like curious. I think that depends a lot on where they want to go with the Blade movie and what like. Obviously, Mahershala Ali is one driving it, but like, what's their angle behind making one? You know, and I feel that's going like, to yeah. have a big factor in how and what kind of movie they want to make and what kind of decisions they'll make as a result. Yeah, I just hope they don't. As much as that, I think there are good things to take from uh, the original Blade movies. I hope that they don't get so caught up in trying to recapture that or to make a Wesley Snipes Blade movie without Wesley Snipes that they end up making a lesser version of it. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. there's there's no replacing Wesley Snipes, and we've seen that. Mm. But I think, going back to the anime, I feel like a bit more of like a human, like, sensitive, like, kind of deeper kind of blade might be mm. the way to go. Yeah, it can make it kind of philosophical, yeah. almost, like someone in this endless struggle to, like, rid the world of a curse that no one, like, really like understands. knows about. Or, yeah, yeah I, I think he's got just as much as potential as like iron man did because i know iron man films kind of get some flack for being like well it's just another like white billionaire he's facing off against and i'm like why do why wouldn't you want that it's kind of awesome it's like iron like tony stark gets like woke for a second and he's like oh yeah all my friends are evil <laughs> like i don't know I, I, I think that's great but like i also get the idea that you want him to fight like bigger scarier stuff but then he does that in the avengers like to me i got everything i wanted out of that character Mm. Uh, for the most part. Maybe not towards the end, but, like, whatever. That's the whole thing. Uh, So, like, I'd like to see Blade kind of, um, like, kind of get that treatment where it's, like, kind of maybe maybe there's, like, a a corporation with the vampires, like, in the the Goyerverse, I guess. But, like, I wouldn't want that to be the only thing, you know? I'd want him, like, we talked about the werewolves and, like, other mythical creatures, you know? There's, like, there's public domain. Like, what I'd like to see is Marvel make their own villain. Like, come up with an original creation for him to fight off against. But I, I don't think people do that anymore. Although I think they should, because that's like... There's limitless potential with these things, you know? That's the other thing with, with Blade as well, is that I don't think there's a huge amount to draw from from the source material. Because I haven't read every Blade comic, but I've read a bunch. And then a lot of the early ones are very much like this 70s exploitation stuff that just happens to have Blade in it. Yeah. Then in the 90s... There's maybe a couple of like mini series and stuff that define what Blade is, yeah. and then after that, yeah. all those comics are like building off Wesley Snipes' Blade, yeah. and he completely changes how he looks and all this stuff. And I think it's one of those weird situations where those movies have like defined him so much that you can just come up with a new villain because I, there's not like an iconic, yeah. obvious thing to do. I think once you go beyond Deacon mm-hmm. Frost, I don't think anyone knows Blade villain. That's the other thing. I don't think there should be a Deacon Frost. Or a Dracula. I would have said a Dracula until I rewatched. Uh, well, not rewatched. And I hadn't seen Blade Trinity before we rewatched it for the you did a retrospective. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I. I'm so sorry. I, <laughs> I was so ready to come into this conversation and be like, they should adapt the uh, comic where Blade tries to rid the universe of the curse of vampires for good by taking down Dracula. And then we watched Blade Trinity, and they, I was like, oh no, they did it. They did it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe kind of... I'd be down for Dracula again, but kind of like the Spider-Man versus Venom thing, like you kind of got to reintegrate it in an entirely new way now. Like, Because mm-hmm. regardless of whether or not you liked it or disliked it, Spider-Man 3 did it. And for the general populace, that's still like a defining film trilogy, you know, like people Mm. so like my cousins who watch like, or, and relatives that watch like two movies in theaters a year, they're like, Oh yeah, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, right? Like they, they're (laughs) like Tom Holland too, you know, like they don't, they don't pay attention to that stuff. And so uh, that's very telling to me, but I guess a, a big concern for me, which might sound ridiculous, but I have seen far from home. So it's not that ridiculous is like, if we open up with like a blade opening monologue and he's like, after the sacrifice of Tony Stark, oh. you know, it's like I was inspired blah, 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 to continue my journey. And people laugh now, but nothing's off the table anymore. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Spider-Man's calling in drone strikes, so anything can happen. <laughs> like edit in like a, like a, a pre-credit scene where like blaze at the back of like the funeral. Being like, 
Aber nein, das ist <lacht> Yeah. God. Well, yeah, like, that's a good question, actually. Like, how would, plot-wise, what would you like to see, I guess? I think one thing that they could do, which, again, was a stronger idea in my head before I watched Blade Trinity, was uh, to do the Night Stalkers slash the Midnight Suns tend to be the supernatural side of the Marvel Universe, like, teaming up. So you mm-hmm. get, like, uh, Ghost Rider in there and stuff like that. And I think that would be something that they could build towards. Like a Night Stalkers movie at some point. Yeah, or even, like, those characters can show up in a later Blade movie. Uh, yeah. Not the first one, really, but they can start to build that. But they kind of they did that in Blade Trinity, but then they were like, Ryan Reynolds is in the Night Stalkers yeah. now. and So is Jessica Biel. Yeah, and it's just... It, <laughs> It was just a name drop, yeah. you know. But I feel like they could do something with that, maybe. But to be honest, I actually really don't know what a uh, plot-wise it could be, mm. uh, other than just like any excuse to sort of dive into the specific psychology of Blade, of like this traumatized. I do love the idea that Blade is doing the right thing, but he is crazy. Anyone who <laughs> dedicates their entire life towards <laughs> wiping out vampires. And sort of mm-hmm. lives on their own carving steaks all night. There's a certain like psychosis to that that I think would be fun to lean into. And I mm-hmm. think Mahershala Ali could really pull off. And I'm almost like any plot that kind of has him like doing crazy shit. Yeah, almost like a more like I guess straight faced version of like what Wesley Snipes was doing. Yeah. Which might be a bit of an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't know. I guess I, I'd want to see like something almost John Carpenter esque, like really simple. Yeah. Like really bare bones simple for the first film. Where you could just kind of add a lot of cool like character stuff and like uh, set pieces to it, you know? And I think this would, this would be a really great opportunity for Marvel to kind of diminish their $200 million budgets. Because this movie should not cost more than like. A hundred million dollars. Yeah. Think. Unless they go like full black I, god. I, oh yeah, yeah, of course. I mean like like Black Widow, like I was kind of intrigued by it at first because I was like, Oh, it's like a spy movie, you can do like a John Wick thing. Yeah. And then you know the last trailer, she's flying through the air and I'm like, Never mind. Yeah. Uh, but like I, yeah, this, like point. don't don't do that. Like just do some John Wick esque fight scenes. They've hired those choreographers before, you know? Like they they got their numbers. I think going off that as well, I feel like there's no reason for this movie to be like, you know, two and a half hours long either. Like make it some 90 minute sort of uh, action orientated choreography focused thing. And then it really doesn't need to go big. I also don't think Blade needs to necessarily save the world either. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't think it necessarily needs to be that big. While I agree, like I feel like over the last like three to four years... Marvel movies have just become, like, more and more homogenized. And I'm wondering if Blade will get sucked into that, like, big, like, Disney Marvel machine to come out as, like, something very sanitized. Right. But then we could get another Black Panther, maybe, and it could, mm. like, if they have the right people working on it. That's, That's the a strange good point, thing. actually, yeah. That's the strange thing, because yeah. we don't really know anyone who's working on this, right? Other than Ali, right? Yeah. Like, I think yeah. that was pretty much his idea. That's a good question, actually. So, like, huh. it's, if it's all in, like, dream, like, production team, who do you want directing this Blade movie? I have no idea, to be honest. Have you got any I ideas? I either. I've no, got a joke answer. It's like... <laughs> What's your yeah, joke answer? I don't answer? know. My joke answer is Tim's story, but, like... Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, what kind of, like, director would be good for, like, very, like, dark, like... Do you want know Guillermo del Toro, actually? Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of my answer to everything, though. I'm like, yeah. when in doubt, just get to the Toro. Toro. Yeah, <laughs> he's one of those dudes who could just do anything, and you know it'll be good. Uh, like even his like compromised film mimic is like watchable. <laughs> so I think there needs to be like someone who has this like proper enthusiasm for it, for and, like, making uh, like monsters and like the whole like vampire underworld. Yeah, I almost have more trust in this movie in a weird way than I do for like any other like Phase Four. Uh, Marvel project apart from maybe like oh, Sam Raimi's uh, Doctor Strange maybe mm-hmm. as well like Love and Thunder yeah there's a good chance with Blade because there's not there's not a huge amount of stakes for what they have to do pun intended yeah <laughs> uh-huh. but they, they can kind of go whichever way they want so there might be a little bit more flexibility with creative vision I suppose so mm-hmm. yeah and hopefully if the budget isn't super huge like they'll be a bit more like inclined to go well yeah do whatever you want Mahershala 
and yeah. like be a bit more liberal with that. Another thing, um, what do you guys think they should call this one? And do you think they just call it Blade? It's going to be called something like Blade Reborn or something stupid. They do like their subtitles. Yeah. Yeah, like maybe Blade, like... They can't have blood in the title, though. I was going to say, like, Blood Wars or something, but <laughs> blood is, like, too hard for, for most audiences, I guess. What about uh, Blade New So blood? that's something I actually agree with, but... <laughs> Well, the the fact that they've done Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness makes me think that they might get a little bit more existential and like kind of like creative with it. Yeah, so maybe, but I don't. There's not really any like big Blade storylines. No, uh, I, I guess it would have to be someone pretty like enigmatic, like Blood Wars. Blood Wars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but like for the director thing, I just I I thought of two right now that both very good with VFX action and. Um, Sometimes benefit from a little oversight. Uh, just a little, though. Robert Rodriguez and Gore Verbinski. Interesting. I, I, I like those guys a lot. Yeah. Because Robert Rodriguez already, already did um, From Dust Till Dawn, which is about vampires, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've actually seen, seen that. that. No. I've watched a TV show, okay. and I think like the movie is meant to be better. Yeah, I've never seen the TV show, but Don't. I've heard that statement yeah. a lot. Um, and the the movie does actually kind of benefit if you didn't know it was vampires, but it's a it's a genre shift movie, you know, and um, it's it's really kick ass. I think you guys will like it a lot. Uh, and he he just did Alita, which looks like a five hundred million dollar budget movie that was made for like less than every last five Marvel movies. So respect and then Gore Verbinski Disney's already got his number from Lone Ranger and the Pirates trilogy mm. so I, I I think um he's dabbled in horror as well yeah. hasn't he yeah he did the ring which is like oh. incredible like it's one of those rare remakes that I would actually put like above the original wow. I don't know if that's controversial and then he just did cure for wellness which is probably is too long but it's kind of like his fan film Bioshock movie right <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, that sounds yeah. interesting. He's yeah. sounds someone who can manage a budget, but then also, like, he can manage a big budget, but he can also get a bit weird as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I guess that's the main thing I want. I want this to be as weird as possible. And I want to be surprised. I want two things from this Blade movie. And one of them is, like, Blade the series is terrible, but I think one thing that kind of helped it was having to rely on, like, a bit more practical effects. Mm. And I think, like, I don't think the action in the Blade movies are bad, but I feel like the practical stuff in Blade the series was actually really good. So I wouldn't want them to go, like, too heavy on the VFX. Yeah, there's no need to make, yeah. like, Mahashala, like, a CG model for half the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the second thing I wanted was Razor. I want I want the murder dog. Oh, there's a... The Blade anime has a dog companion called Razor. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's... <laughs> All right, I like dogs. Yeah, and it... It's unkillable, it's like... It takes down, like, a giant eagle at one point. Yeah, I, I guess we're kind of... We're really selling this show. Yeah. <laughs> if you watch yeah. a bit anime, watch a bit anime, because... Yeah, I think it's, like, a good model for what they could do for a movie. Mm. But also, you get to see a dog kill, like, a vampire 300 feet in the air, and it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you sold me. <laughs> wow. Uh, have you guys uh, done any... Blade retrospectives or anything on the Waffle Press? No, no, Blade is, is untouched, but I, I would love to revisit those movies for that, because at least the first two. I, like, I, might, I might just do something on the first two. I don't know if there's something yeah, worth talking I, about in the third one. That first one, though, I'm, I'm so into... I'd seen, I'd seen it when I was very young, but I couldn't really remember it. Uh, but coming back to it, it was such a... It really shot up to the top of my like superhero movie rankings. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm really into it, and it made me like a bit more excited to see more of this character. I think. Mm, I agree. Yeah. How young were we all when we first saw Blade or any of the Blade movies? God, I think I must. It must have been one of those movies because it came out when I was like four years old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think I must have. It must have been like one of these late TV movies that I had on on like the volume on like one to not wake up my parents or something um so I, I was probably like eight or something when i saw it uh which explains why i don't remember so much of it yeah. and why i needed to sort of come back into it but i'd never seen blade 2 all the way through and i'd never seen blade trinity until like the last like month or so 
yeah, I'm in a similar boat. Like, I think I saw Blade, the first one, like, a bit later. And pretty much all I can remember from that as, like, a ten-year-old boy was some motherfuckers always ice skate uphill. <laughs> and that's yeah. all I can really remember. Yeah, that's all you need to remember. That's all you need to remember. <laughs> Emblematic of it. Yeah. I didn't see the first Blade until, like, college. But I remember seeing the second one, like, the moment it hit, like, home video. Because I was at a family party. And, like, there's this, like... I think it's like a, a meme at this point online, like a, a like Mexican family parties. The parents will be outside drinking and dancing, and the kids will be like either running around or like inside the house watching a movie, right? And so naturally, at this family party, we're all watching a movie, and my cousin, I think it was my cousin Richie, he was like, "Oh, I just got Blade 2. and I was like, "Oh, okay, whatever." Like I wasn't into scary movies at the time. I was just tuning in and out, running outside, and I came back inside right at that scene where Donnie Yen stabs the vampire to the wall. <laughs> and it rips itself out and it's like intestines are flying around as it crawls backwards up the wall. And so little like eight year old Diego was just like, what the fuck? What, what the fuck <laughs> is that? Like I had never seen anything like that. Yeah. And it terrified me. But I was also like, that's kind of the greatest thing ever. So I, I like that your cousin coming in with that DVD is framed in exactly the same way as if he's giving you weed for the first time. Yeah. Or something. Yes. <laughs> Hey, guys, have you tried this Blade 2? Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a little hit of Blade 2. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, and it is an experience, to be fair. Yeah. Have you guys got anything more to say about uh, about the Blade movies or future Blade movies, now that we're at the end of our retrospective? Not really. Like, I think we kind of covered it all. I think Blade M is the way to go. And, yeah, Murder Dog. That's my... <laughs> Mur- Murder Dog sounds pretty terrific. What about you, Diego? <laughs> Um, if you have to team them up, team them up with fun people. Like, for me, Spider-Man movies are teaming them up with, like, people that don't need to be in his immediate circle ever. Uh, like, why hasn't Spider-Man teamed up with, um, Ant-Man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I like to see Blade with Doctor, like, Blade and Doctor Strange makes sense to me. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Just, if you gotta do that, do, do it with people who make sense. Yeah, do it, yeah. Do, like, get imaginative with it, I think. So I think we're finally coming to the end of our extremely long Blade retrospective. Let's never talk about Blade again on this podcast. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> but those who haven't checked that out, make sure you go back and listen to our Blade episodes about Spider-Man the Animated Series, our Blade retrospective, and then our Patreon episodes on the rest of the Blade uh, franchise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also make sure to check out Diego's stuff because the Waffle Press is one of my favorite podcasts. They do a lot of thank you, a lot of new stuff. But they also like do a bunch of retrospectives like we've been doing with this Blade thing. Yeah. So if you like this kind of stuff, then you'll like those guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we're uh, we're doing a lot more uh, standalone retrospectives. It's a, a show that I've titled Let's Talk About Movies. And it's kind of just one-offs. I've done it for like Collateral, The Lighthouse, uh, The Witch. Uh, Gene did an episode on – oh, what the fuck's that movie's name? Garbage Bag or something. I don't know. Some weird <laughs> like retro film shot on like – 16 millimeter or something but it, it was like the introduction episode it's terrific go go check it out uh we're, yeah we're doing a lot more of that this year alongside our long retrospective on steven spielberg and adam sandler called happy amblin yeah Ooh. it's a nightmare <laughs> yeah it is i listened to your little nicky episode recently oh, and oh my god hopefully the blade reboot doesn't take any hints from that <laughs> what adam sandler is deacon frost or something like that oh god <laughs> No, no, no. Actually, I, I kind of, I kind of fuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to see uh, Adam Sandler yeah. in the MCU. Yeah, I, I heard someone um, can't remember who uh, suggested that he could be the Thing. In, yeah, in a Fantastic <laughs> Four reboot, and I was like, I don't know if that works, but I want to see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as Rob Schneider stays well away from whatever movie that is, I'd be happy to see it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. He's not worth keeping around. (laughs) So have you got anything else you want to plug before we uh, head off? Uh, I also help, along with Waffle Press on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Patreon, and iTunes, I help out on some podcasts at Talk Film Society. We just did uh, an entire Michael Bay podcast last year discussing the works of Michael Bay leading up to Six Underground, which was lots of fun. And uh, this year, in the background, we're working on a Star Trek show, which will be out later, later this year, uh, discussing all the Star Trek films, and we're pairing the films with individual episodes of the varying series. Oh, nice. So, check that out when it's out. Yeah, that's, this one's a lot of fun. That sounds awesome. Yeah, we'll check that out. And from our side, it should be back to regular programming, no more Blades. 
We'll yeah. bleed it out, I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut up from all that bleeding. As per usual, check out the description below for all the social media stuff and all. you can find us on like pretty much all the podcast providers. Send us an email. Maybe like a nice pigeon, like, like a brick with like an envelope attached to it. Like anything you want. Really. Yeah, yeah. A- any kind of interaction is fine by us. <laughs> um and of course everyone stay safe and uh remember that vampires wow wow yeah that was (laughs) that was the best improv i've ever seen yeah (laughs) sunlight dogs okay our brains are dying so we're gonna call it a day or a night (laughs) that that one was pretty good (laughs) Okay. Right. Um, that's us here at Night Night Spider Man Show. Um, thanks, Diego, for um, hanging out with us this evening, and we'll see everyone next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>